Pabrachini here at the Aspen Club, going over some programs and protocols with our new Neo Bounder by Plyo Systems, uh, Jeff Cooper's incredible design. So I just want to show some progression, ground up exercises you can do if you're just working out. So we're just going to begin putting a little air in and I went over how to do this. I don't need to put too much in just to start. Again, we like a ground based approach, ground up, get that core activated, proximal stability, and some serratus re-education, make sure that neutral spine is there. Stabilizing a little just bounce, so it's got a little recoil. Just pushing, just activating. And I can just isometrically hold it. Just trying to feed some stability into the core. If I want to put a little upper body into it, I take that serious plus. And again, I try to keep the core quiet, elbows in, tuck the chin. The spine stays quiet, nice explosive thrust here just to rev things up, get things quiet. Now, with this quiet now, I have a couple options here. I can work on my hip mobility right here, sinking into it, because we're gonna need some hip mobility to drive this up. From both sides. Then I can start to teach the basics of driving force down. So I'm gonna stabilize the core, lock it, and I start to teach me over the ankle how to drive force into the ground. There's a line. Can I drive force and keep the core still, initiating from the hip? The whole object is to teach you how to drive force down from the hip, hip, knee. In the mirror, I'm looking at my default in the valgus. Am I staying externally rotated with the front leg? Driving force straight through. And I can do the same thing on a side plane for just teaching how to drive force into the ground. Stacking up nicely. Drive, drive, drive. I don't know if I want to add some bouncing at the end, that's fine, but he is that nice drive. And you can see the platform, I'm just going to stand on it now and see how if I'm lined up somewhere around platform level, I'm going to move, otherwise I'm going to let all the air out. Take it up just to about this height level, just to teach the basic balance. Just shoulder width apart or just wider, so the basics. The cue here is a push pull. I don't want to see a lot of vertical displacement. You're trying to keep the head level to start. Okay? And just think about it, visualize a push pull pattern, core is tight. Push pull, push pull. Pull up, push down. Now the push is initiated from the core, from the hip, knee. If you, if you start with the knee, it looks like this. You hyper extend. Knee, you can see the thrust of the knee thrusting backwards. Visualize down force from the hip. Ground reaction force like you're smashing a can. See, not a lot of vertical displacement at first. Once I feel I can keep this quiet, my knees can come up provided I don't drop the hyper extend or hyper flex the back. Push pull. Then I can start going a little bit vertical displacement, feeling the push into the ground. That's a great progression of teaching it. It gets your heart rate up pretty quickly. So I like to teach it in like 15, 20 second bursts. Let them rest, try again, groove the pattern. Then we can talk about high intensity training later. Now one of the other exercises I like at this basic teaching level is some perturbation training. One, two, three, let go, bounce. One, two, three, let go, bounce. Then no hands. One, two, three, bounce. One, two, three, bounce. For the skiers, they need to go for a rehab. Put a dyna disc in between the legs. So you go from a wide stance to a narrow stance. Squeeze in that other ductor. It's great for the bump skiers. You're still push pulling, thrusting from the hips, quiet core. So you get that nice tight adduction component. And of course, progressions would be no hands. Great progressions here. Or hands up to activate the posterior chain. Then you don't always have to use the toe. So great progressions here. <laughs> Behind the head could be a progression, all types of progressions. 
um, single leg. Now this is a highly more advanced pattern. So as you drive down, this knee comes up. You start like this first. And then eventually, the key is to really drive that leg down. It's not that good to be designed like this. It's got to drive it down. Okay, so those are some progressions. I'm going to unplate it. I'm going to take it all the way up, make sure that airs all the way out. I'm going to take it up significantly higher now. Now by taking it up higher, you have more resistance in the push. It's harder in feel at the bottom, more force. So it's a little more plyometric as you come up. It's a little bit more jump like with less air in. So it's got the hydraulic here, it's really loaded now. This valve here, you start to turn counterclockwise. It's going to start to leak out. You hear the air coming out and I start to sink. Now, at some point after a few inches, you're going to start an explosive pull with the upper body on the return from the drive down. You're going to really start to drive force, more activation of more muscles in the body, particularly posterior chain, hip extension thrust. It's going to really pull explosively. I'm going to just repose it, take the air out. So what you want to pick up when you're way up here and you're driving, think of a high pull lift. Visualize this as a bar with weight. You know, the high pull. You're pulling up on that bar. Pulling up as you drive up force. So those are more advanced techniques. So practice the basic push-pull pattern keeping the fork wide. Now what we're going to progress here are some contralateral patterns. These are more advanced. <coughs> The other thing I should mention is my stance so far has been vertical. If you're a snowboarder, you want to use a snowboarder stance. Or, you know, visualize you're an athlete. You know, you sometimes have to drive off this diagonal back here, your defensive cornerback. You can use this stance as well. You don't always have to be facing forward. The concepts are still the same. They're just positioned. Push pull with different stance positions. Snowboarders will like this stance a lot. Obviously, athletes who play with medial lateral vectors will use different stances. But you start off learning this way, probably the best. Okay, contralateral positions. Let me just show it with the ski pole. If I'm over here, I'm interested in this side. So visualize every time I pull, I'm going to contralaterally reach. Every time my knees come up, I'm going to reach across the body. The core stays straight, so I keep that chest up. I'm not rounding and twisting. And I can even just start off just trying to keep the core still. This might be a better start. And then I can do that with a weighted ball. I can take it up to here. Change head position. All types of vestibular progressions on this. You're kind of unlimited. But that gives you a sequence how to progress from the ground up, proximal stability, distal mobility, driving force into the floor. Let's start with that for now. It'll be a good 